Y'all ready for this? <laughs> All right. We're going to continuously reinvent ourselves. It's human tendency to be reluctant to change in our lifetime. And this could be because we just fear what lies into the unknown and ultimately miss out on what life has to really offer us and fully living our lives for us. It's funny, because I'm an engineer. So in simpler terms, I'm supposed to learn how to build things and make them work. But I've managed to completely have my reality and my life shatter before my eyes when I made a decision for myself and my happiness. Within the year, I faced uncertainty when I chose to end a toxic nine-year relationship followed by an abusive divorce-like legal battle for my duplex. We were never married. Um, <laughs> And I faced myself by untangling and unlearning intergenerational trauma and abuse. And this was all while I was working internationally in France on a new attraction um, for four months during a global pandemic. <sighs> I'm 26 now, and I'm learning more about how I could navigate this unknown chapter in my life by learning who I am, what I'm capable of, and how I could continuously reinvent myself to, the, to live the life I want for me. Also, when I say the word reinvent, I mean a significant change through a series of improvements. And how did I manage to do this when I feel like a lost pup? Well, I had to switch my mindset and basically face the hardest problem I've ever had to face as an engineer, which was myself. Whew. So if I were to somehow outline how I managed to do this, I practice something that I use in my day-to-day -day career, which is known as the engineering design process. But some may say, but Ray, isn't this such a boring and technical way to approach things in life? And I would say, of course, especially with things that are as organic as life. But that's the beauty of it, is that there's so many ways to solve any problem, or there's even different versions of this process and cycle. And I found it, it worked for me. So let's get into it. What is it? It's basically a tool that guides engineers and their teams through a series of steps to solve any problem that they come across. The process is highly, highly iterative, meaning that you have to repeat the steps as many times as needed, making improvements along the way as we learn from failure. And this will help you uncover new possibilities for yourself and ultimately arrive at increasingly better solutions through creative problem solving. <laughs> what it's not is linear. It's anything but, where someone may think, I have a problem, I'm going to do some work, and then bam, problem solved. No, it's not. Sorry, it's more complicated than that. It's a cycle, so you have to keep going in it being in the waves of it. And within that cycle, you have to essentially ask, research, brainstorm, plan, prototype, test and evaluate, and repeat. And at any moment during this process, document your progress so that you could look back on how far you've come and see how much you've grown. Because I guarantee you, when you're done, you're not going to recognize your old self. Also, share your progress with your loved ones. So let's get into it. Ask. Identify that problem that you are aware of and ready to take on. Big or small. It could be anything. And honestly, I'll give everyone here a moment to just think about something that they want to work on with themselves. 
It could be a bad habit, personal healing, a complicated situation. And you know what? This part may also help you recognize some of the constraints when you start to tackle the problem at hand. To learn and define what my issues were, I had to reflect intrinsically and extrinsically. What am I ready to face with myself and around me? Am I really ready to gain new perspectives in life? Of course I am. So let's, let's talk about that, um, focusing on one problem at a time. I have 99, but you know what? This is the one I want to share with you guys today. <laughs> I feel like I don't know who I am anymore and fear that I've completely lost myself over the course of years. What am I doing with my life? What do I want from my life? How do I make my life worthwhile? Who am I? Now the next step is to do some research. So once you have your target, you got to learn everything about it, or as much as you can at the time. And with every great engineer, there's a great team behind them. And luckily, my team was my family, my friends, my peers, my colleagues, my squad. Uh, <laughs> And I looked to them for advice and, and basically their life experience on knowing where I could even start, what books they read, what resources they look into, um, what was helpful, what worked for them, what didn't. Okay, so like I said, I got so many advice and um, stories that I could work with. And I started to think about what direction I really wanted to take for my life. I learned more about how I could recognize what a healthy relationship looks like with myself and with people around me. I learned different types of therapy that I could go to and looked into the treatments and those therapists that I could see. I also looked for different avenues for me to explore my likes and my dislikes, also hobbies and experiences that my support system does that may work for me, or not. We'll see. Now this is the fun part. You are going to the brainstorming phase, and this is where the sky is literally the limit, where you could literally imagine all the versions of yourself that you want to reach out for and strive to become. And you're going to grab them, put them all into one place. No idea is too crazy or too silly. I sat down and I had to imagine all the possibilities where I could take my life at this point. And I had to remember that through it all, I will be okay. I'm not alone. I have my support system. I got me. And at this point, the variables I could play with are starting to develop in my equation, and they're revealing themselves. Um, so I came up with a lot of ways and versions of myself that I would want to work towards. I thought about being a published author, not just in research. I thought about being some type of interactive artist or learning a new language or even going to space. Um, I think the craziest idea I thought of that wasn't just space was putting my stuff into storage and living like a nomad and living this adventurous life for myself. <laughs> This was all during the time that I was still debating whether I wanted to fight for my home or let it go. Now we're going to plan, people. This is where you're going to start basically merging all your ideas into one place or start filtering out what, the, what won't work or what will work. The point is you have to have a realistic plan for yourself. I had to basically create a strategy to face my issues head on and some helpful advice that I've received was that you should not react immediately. Don't make any rash decisions. Wait until you have all your variables in your equation and strategize to make a decision that's best for you. And as much as I wanted to pack up and disappear and go into space, um, <laughs> 
I knew that I had to have a realistic plan for myself. I planned to fight for my home. I planned, which in turn, to talk to lawyers, uh, learn about refinancing, HELOCs, real estate market, in this economy, I know. Um, I also plan to go to therapy, specifically psychotherapy, and specifically a Filipina uh, specialist where I could start to sort out what is cultural, what's actually abuse. I planned to address my trauma head on and wanted to do more creative things for myself. I planned to take art courses. I planned to travel more. And I started to book trips for myself and basically explore the world. I planned to run 5Ks again despite my torn meniscus in my knee. I know it sucks. And I wanted to focus more on myself, so I planned to stay away from social media during this time. Now we're going to enter the prototyping phase, and you're going to start applying yourself and making your first moves. This may seem like the scariest part of the, the process, but don't worry. You have to remember you're not alone, and it's OK if you fail the first time. This is the phase where you're going to also start to understand what your boundaries are and how far you could really push your comfort level. And so I started my healing journey. I started therapy. I started healing from my separation, healing my, or parenting my inner child, as well as undoing any intergenerational trauma so it doesn't affect my future relationships or my future kids. I, I actually traveled around France and started hiking the mountain ranges there. I even hiked in national parks here, like in Yosemite. I started my watercolor courses and as well as a creative direction course in Pasadena. I even completed, I'm pretty proud of this one, my first 5K in years <laughs> without stopping <laughs> and started looking into future races to run further distances for myself. I also developed something that I call a backbone. <laughs> when I started to negotiate and learn how to calculate numbers so I could keep my home, and I ended up doing so because I won that battle. <laughs> <laughs> Now we're going to test and improve, guys. Test and evaluate. You must try, fail, reflect, and learn. If it didn't go as planned the first time, take a step back and think about how you could do better in that situation. I basically learned all the things I enjoyed doing for myself again, and even made a schedule for myself. I learned more techniques to address my traumas. I even learned life lessons through my art and travel to places I've always wanted to see. I started learning what I'm capable of, what is my self-worth, developing my own self-confidence, and what I value in life. And most importantly, I began loving and accepting who I am and what I want to do with my life, which is being the best version of myself each and every day. So. We got to improve. Now we're entering that cycle phase. In order for this to be successful, you must practice growth mindset. Love your failures, guys. Don't let them define you. Practice persistence. When you fall, you have to pick yourself back up. And be ready to make your weaknesses your strengths. I always had to keep in mind the following, which was knowing my values and staying true to them and myself. Again, document and share that progress because, again, when you decide to change, you're going to be unrecognizable from who you were back then. You are who you are now. OK, so as much as we want to push any engineering project into production, maintenance, reliability, and sustainability are just as important as arriving to the solution. So I'll tell you guys a secret to any relationship whether it's with your family, your friends, romantic, or even with yourself, effort and consistency are key. I'll 
also. Unfortunately, time and money are not infinite. This is the one life you got for yourself, guys, and make it count. Also, when I mean money, the best investment you could ever make with anything is in yourself. And as a guiding compass, do what you love and love what you do. As simple as that, it will work wonders for you. Lastly, challenge yourself. Do something that absolutely scares you. And I almost did not do this TED Talk today to speak to all you beautiful people because I was scared and I feared the, the whole thing despite having it be a childhood dream of mine. But then I thought back to a time that I was working on the construction site. There was an indoor roller coaster, and if anyone knows anything about me, I may work on rides and attractions, but I'm terrified of roller coasters. <laughs> so I decided, you know what, it's luring me, I'm curious, I want to try it. I want to experience it. I went to the ride platform, and I watched trains launch into the darkness. There were no POV videos of this, guys. It was an active construction site. <laughs> I finally was waiting 10 minutes, then it became 10, became 15, then 15 became 20, but then I just ended up waiting, and the next thing you know, it was in an hour. Just kidding. I was there for like, well, it felt like an hour. <laughs> so I decided to take the first steps, stick my butt in that train, and lower that safety restraint, and you know it's gonna be a ride when you gotta do this motion. <laughs> and the moment it started counting down into the launch, I was thinking, what did I get myself into? But I was glad I experienced it because I didn't let my fears or myself hold me back from what I wanted to experience in life. And I hope that with this process, you do the same too, and you start to become the best version of yourself. Thank you.